Hello everybody, welcome to the PE Web Lecture Series. I'm Celeste and I'm very excited to have you here today. So today's topic is on naysayers, specifically how to deal with them. So if we look at dictionary.com, a naysayer is someone who habitually expresses negative or pessimistic views. So for me personally, naysayers is a topic that I can really relate to because in the course of pursuing my goals in the past few years, um, there have been times where I, I encountered naysayers. So for example, when I quit my job a few years ago to pursue my passion, then there were people who were just saying no, um, discouraging me, or some not even taking my goals seriously. And then, um, so for some of you, it could be other goals, say when you pursue a healthier lifestyle, and the people, the people around you could be discouraging and they may say things like, you know, um, stop eating those healthy stuff, it's so boring. Like, you should just eat um, all this fast food with us, you should just eat something that, uh, like french fries and, and stuff like this. So, you know, people like this, they are being discouraging and not helpful. So another example I can think of uh, for myself would be, say, um, when I made the decision to become a vegetarian, I mean I'm vegan now, but like in 2008 when I made the decision to become a vegetarian and I was actually um, eating vegetarian food, then I think like a, a couple of people were actually quite insensitive to my decision. Like um, one of them said like, oh you're gonna give up after one week or I'll just give you two weeks max. Like something, something along those lines. And that, I mean, that can be quite insensitive saying a comment like this uh, because it represents like not um, not respecting someone else's beliefs. It also takes a lightly of note what things things that people say. So these are examples of naysayers. And if you if you have naysayers in your life at the moment, that can be a bit hard to deal with, especially because they tend to be quite negative. And they tend to be a white blanket. Like um, no matter what you say, they they behave like devil's advocates, um, always saying nay, you know, discouraging, giving discouraging comments, sort of just putting you down. And I have come to find I have come to find that naysayers are everywhere, um, and it's really about learning how to deal with them. I absolutely do not think that anyone should ever feel discouraged in pursuing their goals or put off their goals for a later time or even abandoning their goals altogether just because there's people saying nay to you because like um, people can say whatever they want but you should never let yourself be swayed from um, what others say so with today's lecture, I'm going to give you seven practical tips on how to tackle naysayers. And these are tips which I myself have used over the few years and it has really helped me a lot because if I look at my life today, the people that I surround myself with are actually very conscious, very positive, empowering people. And I myself don't really um, get any of such um, negative energy anymore and it's really provided a very conducive environment for me to uh, really pursue my goals in a constructive manner and of course um, in the running of my site there will still be times when I get um, not so constructive not so positive comments and for these people I handle them via the the various tips that I'm going to share with you later and these tips have been very effective for me. So um, let's now go to the first tip which is to safeguard your goals from them. Okay I think um, you should look at goal achievement as a situation whereby you're trying to start something from nothing. So for example um, when you're trying to start a fire with like a matchstick um, and what the, the flame they're going to get from the matchstick is going to be a small tiny flame and maybe you want to build like a campfire and everyone knows like you can't just throw all the log in because you're going to um, eliminate the flame. You need to let the fire build up by slowly throwing you know a, a little pieces of wood at one time and really just letting the fire grow on while ensuring that the is it doesn't get um, blown 
out by the wind. So so things like this, you know, is like you're trying to create a protective environment for that flame to build on. Um, another example we say, let's say you're trying to build a sand castle on the beach. So when you do that, um, in the beginning stages, when as you're trying to build up the sand castle, there'll be times whereby the tides will will come over and wash over the sand castle. And if you don't protect your sand castle during those times, you never finish building your sand castle. You never get a completed sand castle. You know that's magnificent, uh, magnificent and beautiful and grand. You're just always going to be stuck in the beginning stages, trying to create like the basic shape. And at what point you're going to just feel so discouraged that you decided you decide that no, nah, I'm not going to do this anymore. So, what's very important in this critical beginning stage is that you safeguard your goals from people who are not going to be conducive for them. So for example, let's say you are going to start on a new goal. Okay, let's say you want to lose like 50 pounds this year. And it's going to help if you safeguard your goals from the people who tend to be discouraging to your healthy living endeavors. So um, it could be say friends who tend to uh, want you to eat like unhealthy stuff with them, or friends who tend to tell you to stop exercising whenever you say, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm going for a jog this evening," and then the friend will say, "Oh, don't jog, just go home and rest. Like, just like, why are you exercising for? Like things like this." And um, because whenever you expose your goals to someone who gives negative feedback, every time you do that, you're sort of receiving um letting your goal get indented a little bit. And even if it's not observable, you just see it as like um, negative energy coming your way. And you want to protect your goals from as much, you want to protect them from whatever negative energy you can. So safeguarding your goals um, is very, very important. So for me, I'm very conscious about the people that I uh, share my goals with. I don't share my goals with people who I feel will be negative, will be discouraging, because if I feel they're not going to understand, then there's totally no point in talking about them altogether, because they're just going to shut them down. On the other hand, for the friends and the people whom I know are very supportive and empowering, I just tell them what I have in mind, and then we just kind of build off each other's energy and brainstorm and talk about them. And it is a totally wonderful experience. So, the second tip is to eject the naysayer from your life if you can. So, um, this might be tough if the person is someone who is very, very close or um, is part of a close social circle. But for the naysayers whom you are not so close with or who are just acquaintances or who are just um, distant colleagues, then the best thing you can do is to try to eject them from your life. Like, um, wherever possible, don't hang out with them. Uh, and like, if, if it's a very close friendship and the friendship is really becoming very toxic, then it might be good to have some distance in that friendship. The third tip would be to evaluate the naysayer's background. So, for example, Everyone has an opinion, and but the thing is, every opinion differs because it comes from a different place. So rather than take every single opinion that you hear and try to absorb or integrate or apply it, I think it is very important that you evaluate the source of that opinion and see whether it's coming from a place um, that is credible. So for example, uh, in the running of my site, PE, which is personalexcellence.co, which is .co, um, there are many times when I get comments and feedback, which are all very, very helpful. And then there are times where I get criticism, and some of the criticism may not be constructive, some of them may be. Um, and sometimes the, the comments can totally contradict each other. So for example, there could be someone who says that he wants the font to be smaller, or that there can be someone else who says he wants this, the font to be bigger. So in such cases, how do I then evaluate like whether to make something 
uh, to follow uh, someone's opinion or to follow someone else's opinion. And uh, what I do here is I look at the source of the opinion. Okay, um, for the people who are giving me comments on a certain area, do they have the kind of achievements that I want? Do they have the experience? Do they have the background um, in what they are giving the comment on? And if the answer is no, then I tend to weigh it out with um, other factors. I don't Im immediately apply um, those comments or those suggestions because ultimately you're not going to be able to please everyone. And I think it's more important that you really do the things that firstly, you most resonate with, that you really believe in, and secondly, that really will take you to your goal. And what will take you to your goal is if you um, refer to someone who has already been there, done that, or who has the necessary background experience in this area. So another example for um, this tip would be, let's say, Again, using the example of improving your health because I believe it is a goal that many of you uh, are very passionate in. So let's say you're trying to lose weight and then um, there's someone who says like you should just continue to eat fast food and stop dieting. But the problem is that person is overweight himself or herself. So based on this tip, evaluating naysayers background, you should just discard what the person say altogether because if you follow his or her advice or words, you're just going to end up where he or she is and that's totally not where you want to be. Okay, the next tip, the fourth tip would be to ignore the naysayers, tune them out. I like to use this example which I've quoted a few times on personal excellence um, and here I'll show you with you this story. Okay, there's one one day um, a man visits Buddha and this man is very very angry so he knocked on Buddha's door and he was like shouting and screaming and whatnot. So Buddha opened the door and when Buddha opened the door, the guy started, you know, um, giving a lot of negative comments and negative energy and just saying like, oh, he disagrees with all his teachings and all this stuff. So after ranting for like a few minutes, Buddha very calmly replied. He said, sir, if someone was to give you a gift, but you do not accept the gift, is that gift yours or is that gift the person's? And the guy calmed down for a while. He thought for a few seconds and he replied, the gift is that person's. And then Buddha said, great, because right now, all the negative energy that you're trying to give me, I am not accepting them. I'm letting them remain with you and I am not accepting your gift, quote unquote gift, whereby the gift refers to his anger. And then the guy stumped, then walked away from Buddha's house. So this example is actually relates a lot to um, our situations with naysayers. Because when naysayers give negative comments, that's fine. It is their right to say whatever they want. It is their right to give the opinions that they want. You can't stop them from doing that because they can do what they want and say what they want. But what you can do is not to accept their comments because as long as you don't accept their comments, their comments are theirs. And I think this is something that is really important for me because I think in the past, I tend to really weigh myself down with everything that people say, negative or positive. I just felt like as long as someone said something to me, it is then my responsibility to do something about it. So that just created a lot of stress, a lot of weight on myself, and that was totally not necessary. And today, the approach I take is, I will read and recognize and acknowledge that the comment is made, but whether I accept it altogether is a totally different thing. And I will only accept the comments when I evaluate the naysayers background, which is the third tip, and decide that, hey, this is a comment that I want to take. So just be conscious that pe what things, things that people say to you, you don't have to accept them. You have a choice in whether you want to take them or not. 
Okay, the fifth tip is not to engage in the discussion. So I think some of you may have um, situate, run into situations whereby you share a certain goal or dream with someone and then the person is very discouraging and it's fine if the person is discouraging and um, and then both of you just sort of disagree uh, both of you just sort of agree to disagree but what's not cool is when the person keeps trying to put up, uh, put down what you're doing again and again and again after that so in such a situation it's clear that the person is not being respectful of what you want to do and your beliefs and w the best thing that you can do here is not to respond or to engage further in the discussion because it is very clear in such a situation that the person is staunch in his or her views and so are you you are staunch in wanting to pursue your goals so the best thing you can do here is really just to agree to disagree and don't try to fuel the conversation there's no need to respond to what the person says or to try to retaliate or try to give supporting points to prove what you're trying to say because when you do that the other person is just simply going to come up with more things to disprove whatever you say so it's going to be a case where the conversation just goes nowhere and, and then both of you just keep um, talking and disagreeing and then just feeling more and more negative as the conversation goes on. So don't engage in such uh, conversations like when they start giving comments which are clearly very staunch and very negative uh, and clearly opposing what you're saying. Just keep it short and say, oh, I see. Hmm. Okay. So when you do that, you're not being disrespectful because you acknowledge the person's views, you acknowledge that the person is giving the comments and opinions, but at the same time, you're also respecting your own views. Um, I think it's very important to recognize like, you don't always have to agree with what people say, and there's, you don't always have to arrive at an agreement in every single conversation. Sometimes it's nice to just hear dif differing views and just to acknowledge that they are there. So there's no need to try to strive for like a conclusion or like a consensus all the time. And if there are people who um, keep pressing on and keep trying to convince you, then don't engage in the conversation or the discussion. Okay, the next tip, the sixth tip, will be to surround yourself with enablers. And this is something that I really talk about a lot on PE. Um, as some of you may have read article before, which is you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. It's one of the popular articles on PE. And basically, this is a quote by Jim Rohn. And what it means is that you are who um, the kind of person you become is a function of the kind of people you surround yourself with. So if you're always going to be surrounding yourself with naysayers, or if you do nothing about the naysayers that are around you, chances are you're going to slowly become more and more like them. You're going to slowly become more and more negative, more and more discouraged, less and less supportive of other people, and more and more pessimistic. And that is not good. That is not good at all. You want to surround yourself with positive people, with the enablers. So for example, um, last Sunday, I had a PE, Personal Excellence Readers Meetup uh, with the readers in Singapore and we had just such an incredible blast like there were just so many incredible positive conscious people who, who uh, arrived and who turned up and all of us had such a great time just talking with each other I mean we met at 3 p.m. and uh, most of the people stayed on until like 6 p.m. and after that there was still uh, attendees who stayed on and we just hung out until 11 p.m. like it was just so great just talking with each other getting to know each other talking our goals about ourselves in an open authentic manner that I believe most of them probably don't do with the, their own friends and I think it's just amazing when you meet um, like-minded people positive people who are on the same wavelength and who have the same kind of aspirations towards becoming better and to, um, towards excellence 
So it's very important to surround yourself with enablers. Think about the goals that you have and think about the kind of people who actually support your goals, you know, and spend more time with these people. On the other hand, look at the people who are usually not supportive, who usually don't have anything positive to say about your goals and try to reduce contact with them. If you currently don't have any friends who are supportive, then ask yourself, how can you meet such people? And it's really about looking outside of your current social circle, branching out and trying out different meetup groups to meet such people. I know that sometimes it may be hard, especially if you're starting off, you know, with uh, people who don't resonate with your own beliefs, but all of us start from somewhere. And you must know that as long as you take that step out, you're going to find people who have the same beliefs and values as you. But first, you must take the step out. And you must know that you are not alone in this situation because there are many people out there who are just like you, who wants to meet people just like you. So it's important that you take the active step and that from uh, that way, you can also meet the other people who are taking such active steps. Okay, the seventh and the last tip that I have in dealing with naysayers is to think back to your vision for yourself. I think a lot of the times when we get discouraged by naysayers or, or uh, we feel a bit down or people's comments get to us are the times when we really forget our, about our vision. And I think during such times, if you think back to what is it that you want to do and why you want to do the, the things, that really charges you up. You know, in such a situation when you're so connected with your core, with your goals, with what you want to do, it doesn't even matter what people say, really. It just doesn't. Because you know who you are. You know what you stand for. You know what you want. So it doesn't matter what people say. So for example, I'm just passionate about helping people to grow. That's the essence of what I do every day. That's the essence of uh, PE. And that's what I've dedicated my life to do. And there can be times when people can give critical comments, when people can be discouraging. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't even get to me at all. Because I know what I want. I know this is my passion. And I know that for every um, negative comment there is, there are thousands or ten thousands of positive comments that I get. And, and people who, are, who have been positively impacted but may not have... Um, articulated those uh, thoughts. So when you're clear about your vision and what you want and what gets you going, naysayer comments really doesn't matter at all. In fact, um, being affected by naysayer comments is usually like a symptom that you're losing sight of your goal and you're losing touch with your goal. So it's important to recognize that and always to reconnect with your goal whenever um, you feel discouraged. So there's this popular quote that comes to mind, which is, whenever you get overwhelmed by the obstacles before you, it's because you have lost sight of your goal. And I think this quote is very true. So always keep your eyes on your goal and never lose sight of it. When you do, whatever obstacles around you don't matter at all because you're clear about your vision and you're clear about what you want. So I'll end off today's lecture with this quote by John Eliot, who says, History shows us that the people who end up changing the world, the great political, social, scientific, technological, artistic, even sports revolutionaries, are always nuts until they are right, and then they are geniuses. So are you ready to rock your life? Let's start living our best life starting from today. So that's it. Be sure to subscribe to the channel at youtube.com slash Celestine Chua. Read the naysayers article at the following URL. Personalexcellence.co That's .co slash blog slash naysayers. Be sure to show your support by liking this video on YouTube and also sharing a positive comment. So that's it and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Bye.